So many people, they start and they go through beginning Greek, but they never actually get to read the New Testament in the original language right through. In this video, I'm going to talk about the most efficient way to be able to do that, not by depending on vocabulary tools like a reader's edition or a lexicon or something like that, but by actually learning the vocabulary itself. So let's get into it and talk about what is it going to take, how long is it going to take, how much work is it, and what's the most efficient way of achieving that goal. Let's get into it. So I'm assuming here that you've kind of learned beginning Greek to some extent at some point in the past. You know the basics, you've got your head around the paradigms you need to know so you can pass verbs you know, reliably. Uh, you can identify the distinction between, say, an aorist and a present tense verb from a, a grammatical and translation point of view so you can understand how they're working. And perhaps you're wanting just to sort of go a little bit deeper and be able to read the New Testament because, of course, all of those things are great from the point of view of studying the text, but we want to be able to read the text and to be able to read it with some degree of fluency. And there are typically two things that hold people back from really being able to just pick up a Greek New Testament and read it. The first one, of course, is their lack of knowledge around the syntax. Now, this is a real issue, particularly when you've just finished beginning Greek and you're really not feeling all that confident as you're coming out of that. You kind of learned all these paradigms, perhaps, and you've learned some basic vocabulary, but then you turn to something like 1 John or the Gospel of John, and you just realize there's so much more I need to learn. And perhaps even things like you know, infinitives and participles are still like just this murky mystery. And so obviously one of those things you want to work on over time is in fact developing your knowledge of the syntax a little bit further. And one way to do that is to get into easier books of the New Testament rather than those more challenging ones. And those easier ones will give you material that you can learn and read and then develop, use that to develop your experience and therefore be able to read more complex and difficult books. And so from this point of view, you want to read the New Testament in order that makes sense from that point of view. So you're starting with easier books and going through to harder ones. The second thing that holds people back and the most significant thing that really holds people back from being able to read the New Testament in the original language and be able to actually enjoy it rather than make it feel like a chore is vocabulary. So many students, they come out, they learn the 330 words that occur 50 times or more, and they never learn the words below that. Or if they do, they go down to say 20 words of the Greek New Testament, which gives them really, you know, another 600 word vocabulary. So you've got about a thousand word vocabulary at that point. And typically you get into the text and you find it's still just not adequate. So the question then is, well, how do we actually solve this so that we can read through the New Testament fluently without depending on tools and yet without having to go through this horrendous process of learning vocabulary by occurrence, like what they do in seminary. So you're learning the words that occur 20 times or more then say, you know, 18 times or more, then say 15 times or more and so on. Because the problem with doing it that way is that every time you do, you know, you go down from 20 times to 19 times, you actually have more words to learn to conquer that section than you did for the previous one. And that makes it harder and harder to achieve your goal every time you go down one more level, which makes it then really unattainable, unachievable, because it just gets harder and harder and the reward gets less and less as time goes on. So we don't want to do that. What we do want is an efficient way of learning the vocabulary that both maps to that syntactical difficulty uh, so that you can grow into the Greek and learn some experience as you go, but also, you know, just really not dally around taking ages to get through text. So I'm going to give you three different approaches, and we're going to use another one as a baseline, but three different approaches that have been put forward for being able to read the Greek New Testament. So I'm going to give you three different approaches, and we're going to compare these three approaches that have been put forward for helping you to learn to read the Greek New Testament and take into account these constraints, really. This is going to make reading the New Testament a lot easier, and to before I do that, though, if you're finding this is helping you you know, learn the New Testament with a bit more ease, then I'd love it if you'd hit the like button. That really helps this channel and this video be found by more people so that people like you can learn from this and really be able to read the New Testament much more easily. So hit that like button, and if you're there and you haven't already done so, I'd really appreciate it if you'd subscribe to this channel so I can continue to serve you more as well. Now, the question then is, how do we build vocabulary so that in the Greek New Testament, we can learn to read the Greek New Testament in such a way that it's 
manageable? And the obvious answer to that is, rather than learning by vocabulary, really just dump that approach, and learn the vocabulary of the section that you're about to read, and then read that section. So for instance, if you're gonna read through John 8, learn the vocabulary for John chapter 8, and then you'll be able to read through John chapter 8 without looking any words up, right? Makes perfect sense. And then if you want to read John chapter nine, well, go on and read John chapter nine by learning the vocabulary for that as well. And what you tend to find doing this is that when you get into the Greek of that particular passage, boy, it's easy to read because you know the vocabulary for it. And starting with one chapter, is actually pretty achievable because there's not that much vocabulary in any given chapter of the Greek New Testament. However, we do want to scale this across the entire Greek New Testament. And that's where this gets a little bit challenging. And bear in mind that we also want to take into account the difficulty level so that we don't get overwhelmed with challenging vocabulary on day one. So let me just wind back a little bit and tell you a little bit about my story. When I went through seminary, I learned beginning Greek and then I wanted to test out of uh, Greek so that I didn't have to take beginning Greek a second time in my master's degree. Now to test out of Greek at that point, I had to be able to reliably translate through 1 John. So what I did is having a vocabulary of words that occur commonly, like those 330 words that occur 50 times or more, I decided, well, why don't I just learn the vocabulary for 1 John so I can nail this exam? So I went and did that and I built out the vocabulary and just reviewed it on a regular basis, day by day, so that I could do that. And that allowed me then to actually go and master the Greek and the vocabulary for the book of 1 John so I could read it and translate it. And I was able to pass that exam and test out a beginning Greek for my master's degree. One of the tricks of doing this though was having the right vocabulary tool. And so from that point, at that point I discovered a little tool called Flashcards Deluxe, which works on my iPhone at that stage. I think I was using an Android device. It works on that as well. And it allows you then to incorporate by just creating an Excel spreadsheet, your vocabulary, import it, and then be able to review that on a regular basis. And so what I was able to do is as I learned one set of vocabulary, I was reviewing the vocabulary I'd already learned, which meant that I didn't forget any of it. And I thought after I did this with 1 John, you know, I could do this with other books. And so two semesters later, I ended up taking a class on 2 Peter and Jude, and I ended up doing the same thing there as well. And so I got all the vocabulary for 2 Peter and for Jude, and I created my Excel spreadsheets and I imported them into Flashcards Deluxe. And I thought, hey, this is actually quite doable. Now, I didn't end up finishing that class in that semester, but I did learn the vocabulary. And that meant that when I got to sit down with the professor at the end of the semester and do all the examination requirements that I had for that class, I was able to just to translate that book, sight translation, just from a cold Greek New Testament with no helps whatsoever. And that was really something that that professor, it stood out to that professor. In fact, that was Will Varner. Uh, and he had nice things to say uh, about the process that I put together for doing this particular approach. So that then led me to end up creating this for the whole of the Greek New Testament. What's to stop me then from looking at every single book of the New Testament and doing this exact task? And then, not only do I want to do this, but let's take out those words that I've already learned so I never have to learn them a second time. Now, a little bit after that, I discovered that Dan Wallace, the author of Greek Grammar Beyond the Basics, actually put on his, uh, his, his blog an, a recommended order of the books of the New Testament ordered from easy to most difficult. I thought, hey, that's a great idea. We can look at that and say, you know, how does that work out uh, from an order? That should make it easy, right? And then, of course, a few years later, Dr. Plummer and Ben Merkel uh, published Greek for Life. Great book, by the way. If you want to read this, uh, you can get a copy of this. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can go grab a copy on Amazon or Logos. Uh, well worth reading if you haven't done so already. And they provide a list on, in this book as well, which is similar. They have give you two lists, in fact, one ordered by uh, vocabulary alone and another one ordered by vocabulary and syntax. However, what I ended up doing is taking all of that all of the work that I did, I ended up creating a database with every word of the Greek New Testament in it, created a gloss for every single one of them. I went through every single gloss of every Greek word in the New Testament. And then I was able to look at the order that was given in these books, well, this book and by Dan Wallace on his blog, and compare it and then actually work out what is the best order. Now, what I ended up doing then was creating a list of books and comparing Wallace's list, Greek for Life, uh, and also 
uh, the list that I put together. Now, before I go into these, let me just make a couple of little comments. First of all, Dan Wallace's list is not designed necessarily for learning vocabulary. In fact, the same would apply in some ways to uh, Dr. Plummer and Merkel's edition as well. It's not that neither of them are really designed for learning all the vocabulary. And so they give you the vocabulary and then with Dr. Wallace's one, uh, he gives you 28 readings and his suggestion is really to uh, read through a chapter a day and then cycle to the next chapter but reread the previous two chapters and that way you're reading each chapter three times. But you can do that with any reading. You don't necessarily, it's not unique to that particular plan, but it's a really good suggestion and I really recommend that you do read through the Greek New Testament repeatedly. But he recommends ultimately that you use a lexicon like Bura and Miller, and I'll get that, so hang on. Do, 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 do. But Dan Wallace recommends that you use Bura and Miller's uh, a Greek a reader's lexicon of the Greek New Testament, uh, and you use this to look up the vocabulary as you go. Of course, this is much the same as a reader's edition. The only difference is, of course, that you know you don't have the words at the bottom of the page. So it's probably going to encourage you to remember more of the vocabulary. But nonetheless, if you want a copy of this, again, I'll leave a link in the description below. Personally, I don't really want to be looking words up. I just want to be able to read because the more capability I have with the vocabulary, the easier the reading will be, the more enjoyable it will be, and therefore, the more likely I am to actually go read the New Testament in the original language. It should be obvious, though, that learning vocabulary in the order that uh, Dr. Wallace suggests is actually going to be very challenging, and that's not his intention on day one. The other one that we were talking about just before is Greek for life. So with Greek for life, they give you two lists, vocab uh, only and syntax and vocab, uh, and it's a simple book by book approach. Now the problem with both Merkel and Plummer and Wallace's uh, lists that are ordered by syntax, and, and also my own, I would add to this as well, is that syntactical difficulty is actually quite subjective. Some people will find certain books much more difficult than other books. Others will find some books, you know, other books that people find easy, more challenging. So there is some subjectivity in this and it's not an exact science. So bear that in mind as you go through this. And then on top of that, even if a book is syntactically easy, that doesn't mean to say that it's going to be an easy thing to learn the vocabulary for that particular book. And I'm going to show you what that looks like in a moment. But before I get to that comparison, I just want to make a comment about what is desirable in a plan to allow you to learn the vocabulary so you can read book by book through the Greek New Testament. And there are two things that I really want to highlight in this regard. The first one is you want to eliminate words you've already learned. So if you learn a word once, you never have to learn it again. And you don't get that with something like Bura and Miller. They're just going to give you every word that occurs 50 times or more every time it occurs, which means then you're going to be looking up the same word over and over, which is fine if you're looking up words, but if you're memorizing words, you don't have to do that. Learn the word once, eliminate it from every later occurrence so you never have to learn it a second time. Now, that means then you need to have a review process in place for reviewing the words you've already learned. And this is where a tool like Flashcards Deluxe is really helpful because it's going to give you a list of vocabulary that you've already learned every day, and all you need to do is just flick through that list, remind yourself of it, if you get it right, you can swipe it to say, yes, I got it right, or swipe it up to say, yeah, I easily got that right, or swipe it down to say you didn't get it right, and then it will reduce the time before you see it again so you can memorize it. So this is a great way of not only learning new vocabulary, but also of reviewing the vocabulary you've already learned so you don't forget it, which is great because it means when you go back to books you've already learned the vocabulary for, we already know those words and you've been reviewing them faithfully, which makes that book easy to read, even if, even if it's six months after you last read it, or a year after you last read it. So the second thing that is desirable in a plan like this is you really want to work in shorter sprints. Now, like I mentioned before with the occurrence-based, because those goals get longer and longer as you go down the occurrence-based list, each goal gets more and more difficult to attain. So what we want to do is keep those goals as short as possible. And this is where eliminating words that came previously in your, in your learning is a huge benefit because now you do not need to worry about learning those words again, which means that it's going to be less time to learn the next book. Now, eliminating words that you've already learned means that you're going to be able to learn words in certain books so much faster by putting that, word, that book later on in the order because it's got a larger vocabulary list 
uh, than if you bring it earlier in the vocabulary list. So for instance, if you're going to go through in canonical order and you're going to start with the Gospel of Mark, well, you're going to have something like 1,377 words to learn just so you can learn to read the Gospel of Mark. However, if you make the Gospel of Matthew the third to last book that you memorize, and I'll show you the order in just a moment, you're only going to have 287 words to learn, which at a pace of about 25 words a week gives you about 11 weeks of learning to be able to read the entire text of Matthew, which means then if you're reading two new chapters a week through that book, well, you're still going to be able to do that really easily uh, over a period of, say, 10 weeks or thereabouts. And of course, while you're doing that, you can go back over all those other books you've already learned. And again, I'll show you this in just a moment. So let me jump over to the computer and I'll walk you through the, diff the three different approaches and we'll compare them also to the order of books we find in the New Testament as well. So here we are looking at the, the vocabulary in the order that they appear in the New Testament. So if we start from Matthew and go to Revelation, this is roughly what it's going to look like. So what we've got here is in the first column, we've got obviously the number, the name of the book. In the second column, we're counting the number of words we've already learnt in the Greek New Testament. Uh, the third column here, already learnt in book, tells you how many words in the book that we're looking at here that you've learnt previously by looking at other books. And then the thought, these next columns here tell you what the occurrence is for those. So you're going to learn 104 words that are hapax legomena uh, just to read the Gospel of Matthew if you start there. Well, anywhere really because they only occur in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, which means you're going to have this many words to learn in that book. What percentage of those is hapax legomena? And then how many weeks? If we did 25 words a week, how long would it take for us to learn all the vocabulary in that book. Now, if we start here canonically, it's going to take us more than a year to be able to read just the Gospel of Matthew. Now, the nice thing about that is that that makes all the rest of the books following it much, much faster. And you'd finish, you know, really the next by the, you know, just over a year later, you'd be through all the narrative texts. But let me tell you, two years of narratives is probably going to drive you just a little bit mad. So you probably want to change the order to something else. So let's take a look at Wallace's load and what he suggests. So he suggests we start with the Gospel of John, which gives us a smaller number of words to learn than what we saw in Matthew, 729 words. And then when we get to 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, you can see 53 words we've already learnt, and that means we've only got 38 words left to learn in that book. Uh, which tells you then that there's only 90 words in 1 John that, are, that occur between 50, uh, less than 50 times in the Greek New Testament, which is pretty cool. There's only one hapax legomena. Uh, 2 John, 3 John, those are pretty straightforward. Philemon is also pretty straightforward. Uh, and then we get into Revelation, again, John's writing. So these first books syntactically aren't too bad. And then you get into 1 and 2 Thessalonians. Now, Revelation obviously is a longer book, but the vocab load is not that large. Uh, so it's pretty straightforward to go through. The thing is here, that look at this. You come, you start at 29 weeks, which is quite a big commitment. Uh, so you're still going to be more than six months learning the vocabulary for the Gospel of John. And then you come down to the Gospel of Mark, and it's still nearly six months just to learn Mark, 16 weeks to learn Matthew, 14 weeks for Romans, and then it's into bits and pieces apart from the book of Acts. And there's nothing you can do about the book of Acts because it's just horrible to learn vocabulary for wherever you put it. So he puts Hebrews last because the book of Hebrews is just generally regarded as one of the more difficult uh, books syntactically. Now what makes Luke hard is not necessarily its syntax, but its vocabulary. And so this is one of the reasons why Dr. Wallace has placed this close to last in his list as well. And so if we put this last and we eliminate the 1,136 words that we've already learnt in the New Testament, then that leaves us with 583 words that occur 50 times or less. 72% of those are hapax legomena, uh, and a lot of those are actually in those last few chapters where we've got Paul's sea travels, and we've got all these nautical terms you have to learn there as well. So you're going to end up spending about 23 weeks going through that. Now if we go to Greek for life, we can see they start in a fairly similar place. So we don't get a lot of benefit, though we do end up putting some of these longer books up front, which then means that the smaller books get easier. And you can see uh, Romans is just 10 weeks rather than 16 weeks. Uh, Colossians is three weeks, two weeks for Ephesians and so on and so forth. So generally speaking, this gives you a reasonable degree. It's probably better than Dr. Wallace's in some ways. If you're memorizing the vocabulary, remember, Dr. Wallace was not suggesting you memorize vocabulary, uh, but if you are memorizing vocabulary, this is probably 
a better approach. But let me just give you one more comparison and that is the list that I put together for uh, back in the day and which we are now we now have as a product. The difference here is that we start with those shorter books. Remember the two principles that we're working from. First of all, we want to eliminate words that you've already learned and secondly, we want short sprints. So this whole structure is designed around shorter sprints. And so you can see here at the very early stages in John, 1 John 1, four weeks to read through all of the book of 1 John and learn those 91 words. Uh, we then take one extra week for 2 John and 3 John, four weeks for 2 Thessalonians, 2, 6, 8, and you can see none of these are much more than two months until you get to James and then into the Gospel of John. So of course, John is the longest of these, it was the first of these longer books we're going to deal with. And so when you come to the Gospel of John, you've already learned 292, almost 300 words, which then cuts down from 700 and whatever it was, down to 437 words that you have to learn, which means then you're only spending, you know, 16, 17 weeks learning the vocabulary to be able to read the Gospel of John in its entirety. Then I throw in a curveball, uh, 2 Peter, and we've already done Jude as well. Jude and 2 Peter are very similar. So what I do with Jude and 2 Peter is I give you these more challenging books early, but you're going to spend so little time learning the vocabulary for them and then reading them that you're going to fly through them and they give you a lot of confidence when it comes to those more difficult books later on. So these are great for building some experience. And then we go down and we've got the Gospel of Mark. And so by the time we've done that, we've pretty much got everything. These are some of the, the three of the bigger books. And then as we go down here, three weeks, five weeks, four weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks, five weeks. Look at Hebrews, eight weeks to get through the book of Hebrews. Two chapters uh, every week, and you've basically read through the book of Romans in eight weeks. And same with Hebrews, you're pushing through Hebrews pretty quickly. Matthew is just 11 weeks, uh, and then Luke is 16 weeks. Uh, and then, and you can see here the number of words to learn for Matthew is just 287 words, not 1,377 that it was if we put it first, just 287, which means that in just 11 weeks, you can read all of the gospel of Matthew, 16 weeks through Luke. And then of course, there's not much you can do about Acts. It's just one of those more challenging books, but putting it last means that you're going to be able to read it over about 22 weeks, six months, something like that. So working on those two principles of eliminating vocabulary you've already learnt and also working in short sprints to be able to read a book in its entirety makes a huge amount of sense. So this means if you're wanting to be able to read the New Testament with some degree of fluency and you're going to learn the vocabulary the first time around this way, it means first of all you're going to be able to read a whole book. In fact this is what I did. I would learn the vocabulary for the book, then I would read through that book as many times as I could while I memorize the vocabulary for the next book. That meant that I was able just to work through the whole book without stopping all at once, and I found that really, really rewarding. Secondly, even though it takes a little bit of extra time to learn the vocabulary and then review the vocabulary as well, it means that while you're reading that the first time, yeah, it's gonna be slower, but you can speed up because you get experience and you don't have to keep slowing down. The thing is, if you're gonna keep depending on tools, you're gonna to stay at the same reading speed not because of your skill and experience, but because the tools are going to hold you back. If you're learning the vocabulary, yeah, it's slower to do it the first time, but you can speed up over and over as you read through that book and develop your experience with Greek. And not only that, but you can go into other books and other Koine texts with really without looking up very many words, if any, at all. I can read through most of the Septuagint without looking any words up. I can read most of the Apostolic Fathers, again, without looking up many of the words. And that's because so much of that vocabulary is shared with the Greek New Testament. So read it slowly and work your way through it slowly the first time, but your skill and your knowledge grows exponentially once you've learned the vocabulary. And the other last nice thing you may have noticed, because we're working in short sprints, on average, if you're using the approach that I put together, you're going to learn a new book on average every two months. That means on average, every second month, you're going to be picking up a new book in the Greek New Testament that you've never read before, and you're going to be able to read it, and you don't even have to look up any words as you do so. That means this is incredibly rewarding. It means that every two months, you're going to be able to tick it off and say, I've learned one more of the 27 books in the Greek New Testament I've learned the vocabulary for it, so now I can read it. And by continuing to review the vocabulary, you will gain mastery of that. Reviewing it and rereading it, you're going to gain mastery not only of that book, but if you do this through the whole New Testament, of the whole thing. And then, here's the other thing. 
once you've done it like this, you can go back over the, the order in which you find it in Greek for life or Dr. Dr. Wallace's list or any other list canonically if you want to. And you can read it at the same speed that you were reading it because you now know the vocabulary. So if you are interested in doing this, let me encourage you to go grab a copy of the Biblical Mastery Academy Greek Vocab Pack, formerly known as the Student Edition. We've just refreshed it and it's all updated, ready to go. Download all of the vocabulary for the entire Greek New Testament in the order from easiest to hardest based on the order I've shown you here so that you've got that sped up those short sprints plus also eliminating all the words that you've already learned so you never have to learn them twice and just go to bma.to slash vocab pack to grab a copy of that today we're going to be putting the price up in the new year but right now it's a great price so i encourage you jump in go get a copy and get underway so that you can learn to read book by book through the greek new testament starting in the new year now, just for what it's worth, if you don't have any knowledge of Greek and you want to develop it, we've actually developed the entire Greek Mastery Membership around this approach to learning vocabulary and reading through the New Testament. So we give you, in addition to the vocabulary, we give you Greek syntax uh, discussions and explanations as you go through. Uh, we also give you a variety of additional courses that you can learn that are going to help you develop your Greek, develop your knowledge of the New Testament, like uh, things like uh, advanced Greek, obviously, uh, text criticism, but even things like interpretation, so hermeneutics, exegesis, we're going to give you a deep dive into that so that you can follow along with scholars when you're reading through an exegetical commentary and you can actually understand what they're saying so you can evaluate it for yourself. So if you are interested in that, go get our free roadmap to mastery, which explains the whole process in the Greek Mastery Membership. And you can do that at bma.to slash starter pack. bma.to slash starter pack. The roadmap is part of our starter pack. Also, if you're interested in a copy of these, chat, these forms here, I'll leave a link uh, in the description below. You can go grab a copy from there as well. It'll be at mntg.me slash compare. Let me ask you this, though, before you finish. What are your plans for reading through the Greek of, you, of the New Testament? How are you doing it? Are you depending on tools? Are you going to learn the vocabulary? And if so, how are you going to do it? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you and look forward to seeing your comments down there as well. Thanks so much again for watching. Keep taking small consistent steps toward mastery and use this system because really it will work. See you in the next video.